the October 28th, 2013 school board member to session. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, Mrs. Mayor, the roll call, please. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Shagosinski. Here. Kate Mayer, I'm here. Tim Menneker. Here. Colin Triffitt. Here. Lisa Collins. She is excused. All right. Gary Dunlap. Here. And Joe Gittins. Here. Thank you. With six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board at this time relative to any item? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Seeing no one rushing forward, we'll move on to recognition and thank you. Holman Area Foundation, Dr. Carlson. One privilege to welcome and introduce Mr. Barry Plessel from the, he's president of our Holman Area Foundation and have invited uh, Barry to come and speak a little bit about our partnership. It's been historically just a, a, a wonderful partnership that the district has had with the foundation and this goes back many years and I know uh, Mrs. Hancock for one and perhaps others have, have played a uh, such an important part in the foundation uh, throughout the years and so invited at our last meeting of the foundation thought let's uh, take some time at an upcoming board meeting and talk a little bit about that partnership and uh, there's so much to celebrate and so many th good things that have happened and you uh, recall just at the last board meeting um, there was a uh, great recognition on um, as far as our pork feet and I think we'll we'll wait okay. we'll wait but when Barry's done we'll be able to present um, this check, uh, which we, we made note of last board meeting, but now that we have you here, it would be uh, even more special to acknowledge that, that great work and relationship. So with that, welcome. All right. Thank you, Dale. Uh, I'd like to thank the board for allowing me to talk this evening. Um, I am the spokesperson, I guess, the president for the Holman Area Foundation. Uh, someone there like Cheryl Hancock, I'll just read some involvement here the last 20 years we founded in 1994 of people who have been on the foundation it's kind of a who's who of people who have led a service life in the community I have uh, Rusty Cunningham on here Kathy Dummer Bernie Ferry Fred Frick Lloyd Kennedy Dave Podler Mike Schmitz Pat Stevens Barry Bertelson John Chapman uh, Larry Dittman, Lloyd Drazen, Marie Dummer, Mike Drugan, Cheryl Hancock, Steve LaLiberty, uh, Trig Matheson, Lyle Ostrander, Dave Scalota, just to name a few of the folks the last 20 years that have given time to the Holman Foundation. And, and I have the first handbook that we ever gave out uh, back in the 90s. We're, been around for 20 years. We're an organization that nobody knows about with a 20-year history. But... <laughs> Foundation is a tax-exempt public charity. It gives donors maximum tax benefits and creates a permanent pool of funds that will benefit our community for years to come. The foundation uh, manages donors' financial gifts according to their express wishes, whether it's to create a scholarship for needy students or support a worthy civic project. Education is the primary focus, but not the only focus. Uh, we support literary, recre recreational, artistic, and civic efforts in the uh, pursuit of the quality of life for Holman, Wisconsin, and the surrounding area. Uh, we've given out through the pork feed and uh, Viking grants in our own fundraising well over $100,000 to the school district 
typically in the form of $150 grant applications. And I don't think in the time, three years that I've been on the board, we've refused a single teacher request. Uh, about eight to ten thousand dollars a year goes out thanks to uh, 18 holes for Holman which is one of our primary fundraisers that that we do with the school and then the pork feed uh, helps pr provide us funds and then we have an endowment that uh, has investment income and, and we can share that not only with the school but with the community with the community enhancement grants uh, our our modern home is uh, holmanareafoundation.org and I I would love it if you'd take a look on there it is not updated uh, it will be shortly but it, it, it's about as futuristic as an organization as we get but it will tell you a little bit about our mission statement um, our our values and uh, Hopefully soon we'll talk about a couple of projects that we'll be involved with. Uh, in the past, we uh, helped support the pit project, and we were a conduit for that. We passed through uh, for the pit project and the bike trail. About five hundred thousand dollars was funneled through uh, the, this community foundation, the Holman Area Foundation, and soon with the Civic Center and a library um, two asks for the community we're coming uh, will probably funnel I would think another million or two million dollars through the foundation we are a 50c3 corporate corporation well that's fancy talk for you can write us a check and get a tax deduction so I just wanted to thank you again if you have any questions I'd be happy in my limited capabilities to answer them any questions? I don't have a question, but I just honor people that want to be, when they grow up, philanthropists. <laughs> don't you? And some do and some don't. And why business owners, why CEOs, why anyone capable of giving money to an organization that needs it or to a family who needs it, I have such honor for. I, I just thank you so much. Well, thank you. I thank you so much for what you're doing. And all the people that are behind you that help you do it, because I know there's always a team, right, <laughs> that gets it done. So please let them know that there's gratitude. There's gratitude for humans like you. And, you know, I've got five daughters, but if I did have a son, I'd want him to be like you. So, <laughs> so thanks a lot. Well. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, well, don't go away, Barry. <laughs> there's a gentleman on here, Barry Bertelson, who's close to my heart. Yes. Who, uh, I if know you can him. leave a community a better place with your time in it, um, more power to you. Well, and I just want to also, on behalf of the board, say thank you because I know that um, we hear statistics like our teaching staff every year at on an average take a thousand dollars out of their own pocket to do things in the classroom that how unfortunately the school board isn't able to fund and the um, gifts and the grants that you provide to them helps a little bit and it's and I know that it does things like um, when they go on field trips or if they're going to be buying items for their classroom or those types of things and it's not for the teachers it's for their students and it enriches the lives of our students each and every year and um, the foundation actually brought me to the school board I went to a school board meeting I was working um, at the university at a foundation and um, they were talking about establishing the foundation and the board voted it down and I could <laughs> not uh, they voted down the school district being involved and I could not understand why and so that that's what prompted me to look deeper into the school board and to run for a school board. And so um, they did recruit me then a couple of years later after it was established to serve on the board. Yay for them. Yeah, but it, <laughs> so it's it, so much that that group of people that they meet early in the morning, once a month, and then they have many other activities outside of that. But it's brought together a group of individuals to support our community. And it's volunteers like yourself and the rest of the current members that keep it going. And we really 
appreciate that vision um, and of its importance. And so, as Dr. Carlson did note, um, this most recent pork feed was very successful and to the foundation for the Viking Fund for Excellent of Excellence. Um, I have a check of $4,831 to present to you. So, and I think Dale yeah, would like to get a picture, so. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Barry, at the, yeah, right over, oh, right over here. Oh, right there, you're right, right there. You're good. Thank you again. Thank you, Barry. We do live in a great community. It's great to be a Viking, a great time to be a home in Viking. So. Then moving on to reports and discussion, energy report, Mr. Daly. Good evening. <clears throat> Just bring this up. My report is a little bit more than energy report. I'll try to keep it as short as I can. Um, <laughs> Um, I take advantage of this uh, meeting to be able to also talk to you about um, some of my results measures that, that I work on uh, with our department um, to, to measure what we're doing within the school as far as maintenance costs in the physical classroom environment. It's really important that we measure these things so we know we're running as efficiently and as effectively as we can. You know, one of, we're, we're really charged to be good stewards of the funds and the resources that, that uh, the community provides us, and uh, measuring those results is, is important. Um, the other thing is, is uh, in our mission is to make sure we try to provide the best environment for our kids in the classroom so that they can um, learn and grow. The first thing you've seen this kind of uh, graph before, we've added last year's results on it. And I apologize, I think the prepackaged one you guys got was, was inaccurate, but this is the accurate one. Um, we spend right now in maintenance and operations about $4.75 a foot within this district. <clears throat> that compares with the MVC average of $6.03. So we're really doing well there, although as I've reported in the past, part of that's because, uh, you know, we, we have some limited resources and uh, um, we know one of the things that, that we need to work on is our capital improvements plan, which the board helped to address earlier this summer, which I am very appreciative of. It'll go a long way. I think actually the, uh, the, the uh, if you have that one that I sent to Christine on Monday or Tuesday last week it actually shows that one actually shows what it would be if we added 150,000 to the budget or something like that and what our cost would be it would still be well below the average if we added that to the capital improvements the other thing we measure is is uh, the classroom physical environment we, we look at things of like the temperature the four things we look at is temperature humidity Carbon dioxide, which tells us how much fresh air we're providing the, the occupants of the, of the classroom, of the building, and the lighting levels. Uh, we typically, we take these in the, in the middle of winter, which is admittedly a time when we do really well with that. Um, there are times in the fall and the spring, and these principals will attest to that, where you know we get those in between seasons and it's really difficult to to regulate the building temperature the way we want it to be exactly it, it, it's just it can be really tough um the prairie view might be kind of an exception because we are able to actually without getting into a long discussion on how hvac works we are able to actually heat while we're cooling um, sometimes if you turn that cooling on too early in the spring you know you get those cool mornings and warm afternoons you can um, freeze people out of their rooms when it's warm outside or if you
if you wait till too late, you just can't cool the building down. So it becomes difficult. So these these are taken in the uh, um, in the winter on the most part. Um, as as if we ever look to to doing year round school, we, we're going to want to make sure that we address some of the uh, um, some of these things so we we can better regulate our buildings. Um, so temperature really is the, is the one place where we do have the hardest part regulating. Um, but again, as I said, at the time when we take these measurements in the wintertime, we, we usually hit these targets right on. So we'll continue to do the, uh, the cost per square foot. It's important for us to continue to measure that. We'll continue the classroom physical environment. The other thing we want to look at closer this year is, is uh, maintenance response time. Um, our department does pretty well on our surveys that we do in the spring with the, the staff and students and uh, um, uh, parents. The one place where we, we don't do as well is, is uh, the maintenance response time. We, we want to be able to address that situation and that's what my PDSA is, is centered on for this year. And then we'll quickly look at the energy report. The first graph shows you our actual costs that we spend on energy uh, since 2005-06. And um, you can see 12-13 was probably, it was, it was our highest cost per year. Um, the stars below on the, on the date, on the years, actually, um, that indicates uh, when we started having a new utility, a stormwater utility. But the, the costs don't tell the whole story. Um, what really matters is, is our energy usage. And this graph shows our energy usage from 2006 through 2012. Um, 2006, you can see we're over 5,800 KWs. Um, 2012 was was a, a little bit higher. We were still though below the 2006 level. One of the reasons 2012 was high is it was an exceptionally warm year and, and uh, we used the air conditioning really hard. But because it was warm, this is our gas usage. You can see in 2012 we've, we recorded our lowest gas usage ever in this district um, since we started tracking these numbers. So over the years, um, between our energy program that we kicked off in 2006, um, replacing and upgrading equipment like lighting, more efficient boilers, um, we have saved the school district over 1.6 million. If we didn't change anything from 2006 to 2012-13, that's exactly what we've uh, that's what we would have spent, we would have had to come up with to pay our utility bill. I kind of pr passed over this graph. Remember the graph I showed earlier that showed our MVC average for, for uh, buildings and grounds? This is just the utility portion of it. I thought it'd be great to kind of break that out and just see um, what we spend compared to other school districts in the MVC. And you can see we spend about 93 cents a square foot on utilities compared to the average of a buck 13. So, so we do do a good job um, here at Holman with that. John, I just have to say I was reading this during the Packer game last night. And, and I that was wasn't that boring of a game. That's a committed. No, I was so excited. At, I was reading this and I, I kept yelling out some of your stats. And, yeah. and then my whole audience and my family were watching the game wasn't as excited as I was. Like, you know John Daly? Can you see that? You know, I, I was very excited. So this was such good news. I just have to tell you it was more important to me than the game last night. Well, good job. Good. Thank I think you. John Dye, John, you're one of those people that maybe you think about retiring, but don't do it. We're not going <laughs> to let you go, right? <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Any thank questions? You. Thank you very much. Kudos, John. Thank you yeah. so very much. Thank you, John. Thanks. <clears> okay, <throat> and then the next item is the budget. Mr. Miller and Clark. 
I think as Ben makes his way up uh, tonight, uh, we've come around that time of year where uh, Ben's going to be speaking both about the the le levy certification, which is on your as an action item tonight, as well as the passage of our original budget. Um, bringing things a little bit, I suppose, in a sense, to a close, although obviously as far as the development of the budget. But so, and I think, Ben, we're starting with the levy first? Correct. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. We'll get started. Uh, as, as you mentioned, we'll start with the talking about the tax levy because that uh, is flows right in nicely into the original budget. Um, when people talk about the uh, tax levy, they think about the mill rate and um, just go to that first. The, the, the mill rate allows us to uh, convert, uh, take a number and look at each $100,000 of property value and equate that to uh, what it would cost <coughs> for uh, a home for each $100,000. So in the case of 2012-13, we were at a mill rate of 1140, uh, which would be uh, school-based tax of $1140. It will be going up this year by 1.8 percent upon um, approval of this uh, tax levy, which is a 21 cent increase in the mill rate. So you can see that there. The uh, motion that will be before you tonight um, will be as shown there that that will be the wording and just to go into a little bit of the background of this I thought it would be uh, helpful to look at the comparison of last year to this year and then look at the percentage increases and the relationship between those various increases uh, first of all it it starts out by looking at our change in um, enrollment in, in terms of a full-time equivalent student count and that is an increase of 2.6 percent the um, that does directly correlate to the revenue limits and the spending limits of, of the district it does lag because the state uses a three three-year average for that so it doesn't keep up exactly with those uh, with those enrollment increases then that leads into a discussion of how those increases are paid for and there's two components of that the state aid or called equalized aid and the property tax tax levy and there's a an inverse correlation there as you can see there the state aid uh, has increased but not uh, as much as the uh, revenue limit has so that then uh, causes an increase to the portion needed from the tax levy the so you can see here that that brings us up to that level the additional uh, tax levy portion is added for referendum approved debt and so that brings us up to the 4.2 percent uh, increase level continuing on with that then I've just repeated the two columns for state aid and property tax what we do for mill rate then is divide that by the equalized value or the total property values of the district and then that leads to the mill rate um, what you see is the uh, this bar a column divided by this column and I've showed it shown it in two um, amounts you've heard uh, in the news about the act 46 uh, out of uh, Madison and wanted to show the before and after the amount of tax uh, or the should say the levy uh, or the mill rate rather um, prior to act 46 would be have been about 2.7 percent increase the amount after the act 46 is 1.8 um, percent that's about a 10 cent difference you'll see uh, in a little bit 10 cents or ten dollars per hundred thousand dollars of property value so I thought it would be interesting just to show those those relationships there and Ben just yes. for the audience uh, yes. to the act 46 is in the last two weeks yes um, what the action by um, uh, the legislature as far as approving the 
property tax re relief. Correct. Thank you. As I mentioned in the um, in this slide here, there was increase on average of about two and a quarter percent um, overall in the in the school district, but, but the um, municipalities increase in values um, in varying amounts. As you can see here, the the six municipalities that um, have students in the district are increase anywhere from 0.2 percent to uh, three. I'm sorry, 5.4 percent on the on the high side. The next uh, slide I thought was an interesting um, way to show the uh, increase in equalized values. As you can see, the values of the Holman School District uh, area has increased each year, but increased by uh, varying amounts. It has um, dropped off in, in recent years, as everyone could guess. Uh, it, it, you do see some uh, recovery coming back. It's an increase from 2012 to 2013 to the uh, about a little over 2% uh, level there. So uh, looking at the numbers here, I wanted to kind of get a, a background on the components that lead into this before we got into the uh, raw numbers. As you can see here, the revenue limit that I was uh, speaking of, that 2.5% represents about $942,000 increase. The, um, the, the portion of that that's the equalized aid uh, that the is is provided for uh, by state aid is about five hundred thousand dollars, and that was an increase over what was it what it was originally. That leaves uh, the revenue limited tax levy, the uh, levy portion, at about four hundred forty-five thousand dollars. Then we add to that the referendum debt uh, tax levy of about one hundred seventy-six thousand, brings us to a, a total tax levy increase of $620,000 for a total, grand total levy of $15,546,000, which is a total of 4.2% increase. That then is divided, as I mentioned, by the equalized value, which brings us down to a uh, mill rate prior to Act 46 of 1171, which would have been a 31 cent increase. The after numbers are 1161 with a 21 cent increase or 1.8%. <clears throat> and again, just re repeating uh, the other slide, the uh, school based tax on $100,000 relates to 1140 prior year and 1161 current year with a $21 increase. So at this point, I wanted to, before I go into the proposed or I should say original budget let's we'll see if there are any questions from anyone on those are there any questions well it's good news so thank you I know we I think Gary's the one that that twelve dollars <laughs> is the max so it's good that we are going in the other direction I think we had projected at the annual meeting to come kind of close so yeah it was. so this is good news it thank is you. it is a reduction from was it 1179 at one point was was what uh, and I believe last year when we in the spring when we were working this it was even over twelve dollars yeah, is what like, we were forecasting like so three or something like that. each time the numbers came in at uh, the tax mill rate continued to drop so we know that uh, this was not included in your board packet last week because we were still closely waiting uh, we were anxiously waiting and I believe it was Friday when we late in the day actually got the final numbers from the state so you do have I think it has been added to the drop box I believe there may be paper copies as well for the board and so the issue paper um, it, those numbers down there should align with what Ben presented uh, to you this evening so we we thank you for your patience um, we do, do know though uh, it was down to the wire and so we're, we're so fortunate that we were able to make it for tonight actually otherwise we would have had to call you all back uh, after tonight and and vote on this so um, if there's no further questions specifically to the levy maybe I can just make a few comments Ben before you go <coughs> uh, so tonight the board is asked to approve the 1314 original budget the development of this budget has been taking place for 
almost a year. It was last December, I believe, that the board actually looked at part of a revised calendar process. You were looking at some input variables to consider and assumptions to make, which you've actually already done this year. You approved a preliminary budget in February and then a proposed budget in August. Uh, approval of the preliminary budget in February was important at that time so that, among other significant things, we could begin the staffing process and getting some direction, at least from you, um, at that point. Approval of the proposed budget in, <clears throat> excuse me, in August was important for us to, as we started the school year, to get direction on uh, how to move forward on implement, implementation of <clears throat> many of the important instructional programs. So approval of the original budget, budget this evening signals a culmination of a lot of hard work by many, beginning with the Board of Education. I have included in your packet my narrative memo to the board, as well as uh, Ben has included the budget memo spreadsheet and there are some additional items included as well. So uh, Ben will go through uh, that spreadsheet identifying, focusing on the changes since the proposed budget in August. That's what his focus will be for you tonight. There are, a ver there are very few changes since August. We continue to plan for a budget deficit of approximately $300,000. The board approved as part of the proposed budget in August a planned deficit in this range, largely in part to a favorable end to the 2012-13 fiscal year. We believe we will remain within the board's fund balance targets uh, without having to repay um, yourse the, ourselves. The majority of the amount has already actually been used, as you know, to complete the district's wireless initiative, where we now have uh, all our buildings, all our school buildings are wireless, as well as some security enhancements to our front doors, which continues, but much of that money was allocated to those efforts as well. I do want to say, though, tonight that while I believe this budget reflects much needed repurposing of dollars to critical areas such as instruction, technology, facilities. We have much more work to do. With approval of the budget tonight, the board will have repurposed more than $1 million to technology over the past two years. However, I would have to say if our vision truly is to put technology in the hands of our staff and students um, any time that they need it, even to a one-to-one -one ratio, we will need, we have much more work to do. Um, and I know you know that. And so as we work on the 2014-15 budget, I will continue to advocate for greater access to technology for our students and staff, as well as we have many other areas that require our focus and attention. So to do that, uh, we will need to continue to prioritize what do, we, what, we, what do we believe makes the greatest difference in student learning and achievement uh, in the district? So I do believe approval of the original budget tonight should correspond with the certification of the levy. Ben has already reviewed with the board that information. And uh, before I guess I give it to Ben uh, to make some uh, final comments, I do want to thank the board for setting a vision and for its support of this process. And uh, this is a good budget. Uh, even though we know there is much more to be done, this is, uh, this is moving us in the right direction. And so I thank you for your, your work throughout the year. It's not easy, and, um, but we are headed in the right direction. So Ben, thank you. Thank you. I'll finish this then with <clears throat> continuation of the uh, original budget and as mentioned uh, the full original budget is in your packets I'm not going to go through all of those numbers I'm going to focus just on the changes because um, there was really very little change from your hard work and I believe July when the uh, proposed budget was uh, was developed and so I've identified those those uh, lines of change and um, 
and those tie in directly with the previous discussion uh, there is a reduction in local taxes which is in the form of tax relief there is increased state aid of which a portion of that was flowed through as tax reduction uh, $151,000 of increased state aid, $63,000 in reduction of local taxes. And then um, because of some uh, changes in the open enrollment numbers, we will have some additional cost in the open enrollment uh, line items of $136,000. And then as identified in Dr. Carlson's budget memo, he um, detailed the difference between the pro projected uh, budget deficit of two, 262000 and the current 310000 so you see that subtotal there. Then there was also a change to the un ending fund balance of, the, of an unassigned account as a result of the, an audit adjustment uh, made after the proposed budget. So there you have the changes since the proposed budget all of the other line items uh, remain the same as, as you saw pre previously. And I'm just going to, if you would want to reference, I don't know if we're able to bring it up. I know the budget memo spreadsheet. Okay. I'll I don't know, I Ben. I didn't here. even prepare you for that. So if you're not, that's fine. But I know the board has it. And I was just going to bring attention to one of the new cost items. As you know, uh, part of our staffing process and proposed budget work, um, we are moving forward with a 1.0 uh, position for a instructional technology coordinator. And so I've made a note in my memo to you as well uh, to that we have at, um, repurposed those dollars down into the one-time area, connected it with district technology, and um, just titled it under staff development. So that is a change. It's just repurposing money. Uh, right now, we we will um, we've headed in a different direction for just this year only. We're um, but this the eighty thousand dollars is still allocated, directed towards staff development primarily in the area of uh, of technology as we continue to move forward with our initiatives. But I, as I noted in my memo, I have every intention that this will go back up into that new staffing area for the next budget period as far as the instructional technology coordinator. So that was one of the more significant changes, just a repurposing of that $80,000. And when you say that, you're not saying that when you put it down by district technology that that's coming out of those revenue, um, the referendum technology dollars, that's just Correct. still general dollars that's being used for that? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? And this is part of the consent agenda item this evening. So, okay. Thank you. And then, Mr. Clark, I think, are you here for the budget standards? If. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's great when we're both aligned. I'm here doing what you're expecting me to do. So um, it says on the uh, board agenda, uh, budget standards for funding uh, determination. And um, that is the title that we started out on this project with uh, like two years ago. I will tell you that you'll see not the word standards, but the word criteria used. And that was an early um, discussion point amongst the leadership team members. And uh, mm -hmm. so we've kept it for the agenda just to bridge in the continuity. But uh, um, we're talking about the same thing when we say criteria is just a, a better term for us, uh, we felt, to use. So uh, Dr. Carlson actually segued for us here because uh, he talked about the challenges with any budget and prioritization that makes the greatest difference. And that's what this process is really about. You remember two years ago, the board had some special board meetings about budget development and came up with uh, administration developed, then based upon that input, an entirely different budget development calendar, which changed timelines and changed events one of the events that we were not able to incorporate into the 13-14 budget development process 
but look to incorporate into the 1415, the development for next year's budget, is the use of some standard budget development criteria to use for funding determination. And uh, that process first calls for the leadership team to review and provide input. Following the development of an administrative draft, it would come to the board for you to review and provide input. That's where we're at tonight, is for you to have received it in your board packet, you to provide an opportunity to review it, and then provide admit input back to administration uh, so that a final draft can be approved at your next board meeting. Um, following that, we'll be moving ahead with administratively implementing these criteria and making some of the tough budgeting decisions. It doesn't end there. Um, this is part of a Plan Do Study Act cycle, a PDSA for us. And so we will study after year one implementation how effectively, or if in some ways ineffectively, these criteria worked, and then improve them for the 1516 budget development process. You received a copy of the criteria in your um, board uh, materials. Um, these are, in fact, the seven criteria that the uh, administrative team um, came down to. Uh, the list was larger to start out with. We went through some uh, quality tools and activities to get this reduced to um, these seven criteria. Hey, these are in random order. Uh, these are not prioritized in any way. Um, the first thing you might notice is that uh, four of the criteria represent the district's strategic objectives. And um, this was decided early on that if we are to be making significant progress towards our strategic objectives, then we should have budget development criteria that direct resources to achieving uh, those objectives. Um, you'll see other items. Um, mandates is on the list, although I'll tell you that there was some discussion about why is mandates on the list of criteria? If it's a mandate, it's a mandate. No need to apply any other criteria. You just have to do it. Um, it is currently on the list. Safety uh, is another item. Um, safety is a starting point for all forms of learning and service. There's also essential departmental services. This recognizes that our community, our parents, students, and staff have expectations beyond the student learning objectives that are the primary focus of the district. And there is an expectation that these services and the needs of these individuals uh, be addressed. And so we labeled that essential departmental services. So those are the criteria. You can see those on the uh, budget development rubric sheet that you have. So once you have criteria, if you're going to develop a rubric, you have to have various levels of achievement of these criteria. We identified four levels. Uh, we identified a, a scoring standard for each. Uh, four demonstrating most fully satisfying the criteria under the rubrics definition, and one least satisfying the criteria, with three and two being the incremental steps between. And then you can see, boy, it's amazing to me that this uh, came down to one page because the uh, effort that was put into this seems like it should take more than one page. Uh, but this is good quality work in uh, defining rubrics, and thank you to the leadership team members for uh, assisting and their hard work with this. Um, and so there you see the, a description of to what degree or level each one of those criteria is met. And these would then be used to identify those budget unfunded um, needs that deserve first consideration uh, with the limited resources we have. Dr. Carlson, I know we talked about many times what we were going to say here tonight. What did I miss? I think that last part was what I was just going to add. And just to reemphasize, in our process, um, our budget authorities, are, are primarily our leadership team, 
um, supervisors, principals, and directors, and others. They are charged with um, identifying um, within their own school and department what's most important to fund. And yet, we know over the years, it's just not possible to fund all the important items. And so, when we have the opportunity, we ask them to prioritize and, and do that. And, um, but we've worked operationally without perhaps some agreed upon criteria. And so that's been the, really the, the work of the group and um, it will certainly assist me when I receive all those underfunded or unfunded needs from the various uh, departments and schools. And so I, I welcome this. Um, it's still going to be um, a very difficult task as it always is, but, <clears throat> but hopefully that we make some improvements with our process and that's the goal behind this. And that was the goal behind asking you to consider having this part of that development process. So with that, uh, I know there's a lot here and this is why we have it on the agenda for next time to perhaps ask for consideration, but we would appreciate any initial reaction, any comments, we'll take some notes. Otherwise, <coughs> you have two weeks too to um, let us know what you're thinking or questions you have. I would just add that the rubric really kind of helps to spell out to <coughs> defines um, what we're measuring against. So, any questions? I, the mathematician in me, you know what I'm going to say, and that yeah, is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you read us a system one through four, you might consider changing the measurement system to like uh, two, four, six, and eight, or something to that effect, in order to get more separation. You have, you have the measurement system too close together, like one for four, you don't get enough separation. If you two, four, six, eight, you don't get some separation, it'd be more clear. Uh, Mr. Dunlop uh, shared a number of the, he's a black belt in um, <laughs> statistics. statistics, you know. And uh, so he shared with me a number of the uh, best practices that he's been trained in. And uh, that was one of his suggestions. He, we we're talking about the simple addition of the scoring in each of the criteria areas and he suggested that uh, multiplication of the scored number in each category uh, might be a way to get this same type of distinction as well so um, he's aware of some quality tools and sharing those with us so we'll continue to look at those okay any other questions or comments okay thank you very much we know that this isn't going to be perfect, but it's a start, and um, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, then we'll move on to board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in the order of roll call <coughs> and ask that you present any comments or committee reports that you may have. Um, Mrs. Jagosinski. Um, no committee reports, but just a uh, hearty congratulations to um, Mr. and Mrs. Nick Weber, who tied the knot. Friday. Mm -hmm. and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Mrs. Mayor? Um, I have one, I'm not sure of the last name. Mm -hmm. This is a bus driver kudo kind of thing. That, and I think they need that sometimes. This is a man that people in my neighborhood love. His first name is Wayne, so we'll have to do some investigation. Oh, oh. Killer. Killian. Killian. Wayne Killian. Killian. Wayne Killian. All right. So he has gone above and beyond reach out. I, I, you know, I'm not going to go into this, but this is a really good man that we have employed. So thank you, Wayne Killian, for all of that. Um, and then I have like a longer paragraph to read that um, Anita and I both have received from, you know, stupid Facebook, <laughs> but it's about testing. And here's what it says. And this came from um, a principal. We are concerned that these tests do not always assess all of what <clears throat> each of you means to be special. The people who create these tests and score them don't know you like I know you. They do not know that maybe you speak two languages. 
they do not know that maybe you play a musical instrument. They do not know that perhaps you paint a picture. They also do not know that you, you write poetry, uh, stories, on and on and on. I'm going to abbreviate this now so I don't go on too long. <clears throat> what I'm saying is that I know our teachers, our administrators, all of us know, our board members know that all of our kids are more than a test score. And I just bring this up because it's important. We've all got kids who maybe don't have a really good test score, but they've gone on and they've been incredibly successful. Last thing, I'll be brief because I've talked too long already. Number, November 7th, <clears throat> there's a human trafficking in the Cooley region um, all day workshop. There's a free evening presentation. Um, there, there are really bad things happening with our young women, our young men. They're so horrendous. I just bring this up tonight because I think that perhaps in our district, there must be at least one or two who understand how bad this is. Um, so I'm bringing that up. Um, and that's it. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mayor. Mr. Menninger. Uh, just a few things tonight and certainly uh, get out and a lot of great opportunities <coughs> to cheer on Holman Fall Sports. Several are still going and uh, I know even uh, Cross Country uh, has got a participant <coughs> in the state meet this weekend, so uh, great to see the success. Um, but I also did notice the winter sports code meeting is tonight, so very excited. Um, great time of year. Um, a couple of other things, we did have a uh, buildings and grounds committee meeting tonight. Um, and just want to get on everybody's radar, the, the buildings and grounds will be taking it up at our next meeting, which is going to be the second Tuesday in December. Um, but the uh, uh, Badger Cooley power line, uh, one of the proposed routes has it going over the Prairie View Elementary um, site. And so that'll be getting back on the Building and Grounds Committee radar and just want to bring that to the board's attention uh, to certainly stay uh, vigilant to that as well. Uh, now that the line is here, it's got to get back out and uh, where it's going to go is, is to be determined. Um, and then last uh, last week, I, I just had an opportunity to uh, uh, some of the work has me in Rochester from time to time, and the Chamber of Commerce had their banquet there. And anybody who's familiar with Rochester knows that there's a lot of exciting things happening in Rochester right now. The state of Minnesota has awarded a fair amount of money to uh, uh, the Rochester area, and particularly Mayo, uh, in excess of $500 million for this destination medical, which is designed to allow Rochester to grow to make it more of a destination. So it's not just the, the, the hospital, but the community as well. And so obviously, this is a great boon for that community. And as I went to the chamber event, I expected to hear a lot of about how business is going to grow. They're anticipating 36,000 jobs and all of this. And yet the director of the chamber gave a, a probably a 10 minute speech that was all around education. And I thought, very, what a very enlightening uh, and a very interesting difference from Wisconsin in that talking about in order for this to happen, the business folks have to partner with education and how important education is to get these people ready to fill these 36,000 jobs that are growing and the value of education. And as I sat there and listened and I thought, well, what a difference between two states um, and how one is really partnering and understanding the value of education and how that will grow jobs and create jobs and make a difference. And uh, uh, to, to hear that at that chamber event was very refreshing. Um, and I think part of the reason some of the success uh, there. But uh, I, I, I left there feeling really good about what I was hearing um, at that event and uh, do realize that uh, the value of education and business are so intertwined. and. Um, we should not forget that in the state of Wisconsin. Okay, thank you, Mr. Renninger. Um, Mr. Trivett. I'd just like to give a congratulations to all the different fall sports that are finishing their seasons. Uh, football had a huge win over Wanakee on Friday. Good to see everyone out there supporting the team. And then I know cross country had sectionals on Saturday and volleyball has been going through their playoffs. So 
So it's good to see everyone out supporting them and then going to be continuing it for the winter sports coming up. Great, wonderful. Um, Mr. Dunlap. Uh, you have attached a set of finance, uh, financial committee meeting notes. And we did have a small meeting uh, last week on Monday that we started talking about the 1415 budget. And yes, we did wander into the 2015 2016 budget already. <laughs> <coughs> um, I'd like to, to congratulate the fall sports uh, participants and all the coaches. I interacted with uh, quite a few of the, of the newer coaches this fall, and, and they all seem to be great people and did a great job with the kids. Um, I'm real proud of them all, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Mr. Gittens. No comment. Okay. Well, I have a couple things. I know personnel and governance, there was an ad in the paper about us looking um, for members. We're looking for some general generalists in the community, people who may have a background in HR and personnel. We received a good response from parents. I know that the especially elementary schools put out newsletters and they included it in their newsletters and thank you for that because we got um, a good response from some really quality parents in the district and so we're gonna have to go through those and we also continue to look for a staff member or two to come forward that may be interested in serving on that committee um, it is one of our <coughs> board policies that we include stakeholders um, in all of our board committees and so we continue to push that and um, I again I think that's what's made our school district as strong as it is so just wanted to mention that and put a plug in for that I did have an opportunity to get into Evergreen um, attended their family fun fest and thank you to the PTO and all of the staff that were there it was a great event um, Lucy was lucky enough to win the movie night package, and oh my goodness, it, as tall as she was. But so because I went to pick it up during the school day, I also got to see firsthand the security measures, um, the new security measures, and got beeped in, and it was no problem at all. I know people were concerned that it was going to be really difficult to to get in, and but you know I beeped and they looked and then they <coughs> let me let me in, and it's just nice to know that we've taken some steps to have those buildings be a little bit more um, secure and then on the community collaboration um, the committee including Tim myself um, Jay and Dr. Carlson um, participates as well we have met and we received some feedback from them we sent the committee some information on what things we were looking for in a lease um, of the land and we received some feedback from them and we've asked that they um, the administration seek out um, some guidance and potential development of lease from our legal counsel I know that they meet tomorrow um, with the community collaboration committee they'll be discussing it there but if you have any strong feelings or concerns about that please see dr. Carlson or mr. Clark and um, provide any feedback but otherwise they'll be going forward and and seeking um, some information because we are getting down to where we're starting to put those details together and we are going to need to utilize our legal experts to do that so um, that is all I have moving on looking at um, the school board committee reports you receive finance personnel and governance and student achievement and learning in your packets the board meeting schedule we've got meetings coming up um, November 5th uh, Gary and I actually did do a Skype meeting with um, Matt right? with Matt and that was very good I'm looking forward to um, meeting with him as a group he will be in the community on the 4th through the 6th and doing some good work on the 5th the, we will be having a board workshop beginning at 530 so I'm hoping that every board member can make it that evening it's going to be very important that we be all inclusive <laughs> November 11th and 25th um, and December 9th are upcoming board meetings and then December 23rd is um, scheduled board meeting so we're is school in session that day? No. no so school is not in session um, it we have in the past mm -hmm. held a, a meeting the third Wednesday or third Monday if we need to move it um, or if you are okay to meet on the 23rd we certainly could meet on the 23rd um, but we're just asking for some feedback if you want to provide feedback now let I, us know and 
I might, you know, and I know moving it to the third, then we're back to back weeks and would, mm -hmm. would maybe question, I know there's a lot of business, but in the past, occasionally we've gone to one meeting a month. Mm -hmm. Would that be a possibility that to just go to a meeting on the ninth? Yep, that is an option um, because of bill paying, I think sometimes they've asked for that extra additional meeting, but. I think right now we, we believe we could make it work. I know Ben had, had examined that. <laughs> I do know that it would mean maybe a, another modification to our budget development calendar. And so we would go to work to, to take a look at what that would mean of, of just, um, right, just stepping back another board meeting on is, that. Spill. Is the question, do we need another meeting? Because if we do, do we need to look at like maybe the 16th or do we not need? I mean, that would be, and that's mm -hmm. your call, not mm -hmm. my call, but I'd be okay for a week prior to the 23rd? Well, again, the most immediate issues we believe, um, Mr. Miller, again, we can we can make that happen of just the one meeting. We had to really take a good look at this one, too, because December is a five, <coughs> let's see, is it a five Monday month? Mm -hmm. I think, yes, it is. I believe it is. Yes, and so it is. that even, um, uh, even after that fourth Monday of the month, that's be another three week interval. but. We've examined that, and uh, we believe we could do that. But I think, again, it's more important if, um, if the board uh, feels you still want to meet, you can do that. If, if but my question is, what are your needs? I mean, I know the board supports what. It, the, the, the basic need too. It would be need, more of a timely. Do you need that meeting is my question. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think our response has been we can make it work. Okay. We could this one time we just can't. It. It's just it, not ongoing. Okay. <laughs> but we can make this one time work. Okay. Um, so we're okay without a meeting <laughs> that day, right? I think yeah. As uh, Mr. Menninger has mentioned, we have only done one meeting. The, I think the first question was if everybody was prepared to meet on the 23rd. We'll just meet on the 23rd. Um, but if people would prefer not to, then we'll have to deal with the issue of the one meeting a month. And yeah, right. so so really, so your preference not to meet? Are you traveling? People, I know, may be traveling for the holiday already. Twenty third's an awful busy week. <laughs> it is an awful busy very, week. Very so, <laughs> so I'm hearing the preference is not to meet on at the least 20th. for this yes. for me for yes. this side. Yes. <laughs> Nobody take that personally. No, I know. <laughs> and that doesn't need to be rescheduled. We just kick it up in January yes. and we take it over. Yes. Okay. Okay, so then we will move on to the next items, which are board policies, administrative rules for review. There are a number of items there um, for review if you have any <coughs> concerns about the direction the the uh, committees may be taking on that I don't know if there are anything specific um, I, I just have concerns? one question and mm -hmm. for clarification I noticed one of the policies it was just reviewed earlier this year and has come up for renewal again um, 9.5 F um, 870 suggests concerns and complaints yes. and so that just always kind of comes up on my radar when I see it and then I see it coming up again. I'm glad because I was going to mention something about it but the reason it's there is because in the Personnel and Governance Committee we and with the changes that have taken place in the district related to employee handbooks those sorts of things this policy currently as it stood um, it was all encompassing community members staff members those sorts of things but the language wasn't really clear um, and didn't provide a process or a policy if a staff member independent of any other groups has a recommendation a suggestion a concern or a complaint rela related to language in the employee handbook for example um, what process can they follow so what the committee is looking at is actually separating and having a community-based process for suggestions, concerns, complaints, and then more generically, staff would be included in that. But for personnel-related items, 
we're going to work on establishing a separate policy that would be included in the employee handbook. Okay. And so that's why it's there, Tim, good catch. Okay. That is why it's there. And so um, that would be really... Yeah, it just seemed out of normal cycle. Yeah. So then yes. I was just curious as to the... So I don't know if um, any of the sulk um, policies that are there, if there's any major changes or if it, they're no, just up really for review. No, really not. No, um, <clears throat> there really aren't. There were a few things that were removed to make sure that you know, we're savvy with the law, but, you know, from <clears throat> from things like pets in the classroom, you know, we've got a, we've got a good assortment of stuff going on here. No, it's <coughs> really, it's all, it's all okay. Just the normal review. I think so. Okay, and then moving on to district administrator's <coughs> report. I do not have anything to add, but just a note to emphasize, please take time on those happening reports, and it's just a good way, again, for you to keep up with much of the good work that's occurring every day in, in our schools and in some of our other areas. With that, I'll take questions, otherwise nothing further. Okay, any questions? Seeing none, then we'll move on to the consent agenda items. You have, I think it's six items on the consent agenda this evening. We can consider them all as a group or if anyone would like to pull any out to look at separately. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then moving on to executive session. Mrs. Mayor, if you would read the motion. Be it resolved, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Board of Education moves to executive session. As per Wisconsin statute, 19.851 C for the purpose of considering compensation to a district employee. Is there a second? Second. Um, okay, if you would do the roll call, please. Cheryl Hancock. Yes. Anita. Yes. Jason. Hey, me. Yes. Tim. Yes. Yes. Lisa. Excuse. Excuse. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Gary. Yes. And Joe. Yep. Okay, we will take about a five minute break. <coughs> 